Yeah. Hello you. It's mystery unboxing time again. Um, I've been quite spoiled with them because I've already had one uh, mystery box uh, arrive this week from um, Super Retroid and um, I, that was that was full of cassettes that was really really nice um, and I wasn't expecting, I was expecting one cassette uh, as a gift. I wasn't expecting a whole box of them and now today I've had another box arrive from um, someone else who I don't know if they want to be uh, made public as to, uh, as to with who sent it because um, they're quite well known on um, well let's say they're big in Japan and um, I'm sure they probably wouldn't want to be invested by lots of people going I'm having a terrible time as well please send me things because there's lots of people having bad times at the moment I'm sure um, so um, I'll, I'll just um, leave it there and say they know who they are and um, they know I am very, very grateful for this. <laughs> just completely out of the blue offered me something and then said, oh, actually, while I'm at it, I found a few other bits and pieces that you might like. So I've thrown those in as well. And, and then this box arrives. It's like, ha. Ah. So I basically I, I have opened it up and had a look in at the first layer and then thought I'd better do a whole thing on this, hadn't I? So, um, yeah, so, Missy, now is not the time. Can we do a Missy? Oop. Hello. Look up. Look up, look up, look up. Do you see? Right. This is helping, not helping, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. Come on, fluff ball. Come on. Well, obviously, cats on the internet. That's just even better, isn't it? She is so soft. She is just amazingly silky soft. And so tolerant, aren't you, dear? Yes. She puts up with all sorts of covers. Yeah, come here. Come here. Oh, I'm going to have to There you go. Helping, not helping. <sighs> Sorry, headphone users. That was probably deafening. I'm going to put you over here behind me. There you go. There you go. You have fun over there. Well, you've had a quick. Let's let's see what else we got. We got um, push that further back. I can. Right. Should I zoom in a bit more? Or, no, I'll just lift these up to you. I have got Pedro for the Commodore sixty four. Now, I'm pretty sure I've got a copy of Pedro, but I think it's for the Spectrum. So. Um, I'll have to check that. Well, the viewfinder on this camera is now upside down because I've got it dangling above me, so I don't know if that's upside down or if that's upside down. We'll find out in the edit, I guess. So, uh, that's Mike Glover, apparently, born in Birkenhead in 1957. Birkenhead. Right. So, Pedro. I know I've got a copy of, but I don't know if I've got a Commodore copy. We shall find out. Stellar Wars, I think I might already have. But I don't have a copy that says, B, this does not play. What does the A side say? Does it say this doesn't play as well? Play this side. Right. Do this systematically, Rob. Stellar Wars seems familiar. I'm not sure. Was that the one with the brown TIE fighters? Maybe it's the one with the brown TIE fighters. I can't remember. So, oh my word. You could argue that no one needs a, a, a copy of the fabulous Wanda and the secret of life, the universe, and, and everything. Let alone two copies. This is this is the second copy of the Fabulous Wonder that I have. It took me so long to get to play it that I eventually got a special tap loading device in order to play a version of it. And now I have another cassette of it, and this one will probably work, won't it? Yeah, that's a special game. Uh, actually, saying game is um, probably pushing it. 
experience perhaps is more like it. It's, it's an experience is the fabulous wonder and not in the way you'd expect. So yeah, I spent um, far too long playing that, didn't I? And uh, then I noticed that uh, Rose Tinted Spectrum also um, has a uh, playthrough of it. <gasps> oh my word, Purple Turtles. Now, I'm pretty sure I don't have a copy of this, but this is kind of special to me because this could have been the third game I ever had. Purple Turtles. As I've mentioned recently on another video, which I shan't say which one that is just yet, just in case it hasn't gone up when I put this up. Um, but uh, the first computer game I had was a um, Commodore branded one that came with the Commodore, which was Depth Charge. And then Dad came home one day from work with a copy of um, Pulse 64, just out of the blue. And um, then it came to uh, me spending £10 at Christmas upstairs in Boots in Cardiff, Boots the Chemist. And um, I almost, almost bought Purple Turtles. It was I, I got Jet Set Willy for seven ninety five, and then Purple Turtles was one ninety nine, as was the other game that I actually went for. Which you'll have to watch the, that video to find out which that was. And <sighs> Chiller. Now, pretty sure I don't have Chiller, and I've never played Chiller. I've become aware of Chiller in uh, later years. It makes me think that spectrum up there with that yellow splash there. Uh, there's a couple of different copies because um, one has music ripping off Michael Jackson's Thriller. And let, let's face it, Michael Jackson, uh, what you were talking about was horror films, not thrillers. Thrillers is not horror films. Just, that bugged me for years. The evil of the horror, horror films. You're not watching thr thrillers. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm aware that it's not a very good game, but then, to be honest, a lot of these early Mastertronic games weren't very good, were they, to be honest with you. But they were cheap, and that was it. It, it was cheap, it wasn't very good, but it, it got you a bit more variety in your collection when you only had a handful of games. A couple more, a couple of quid, you could save up a bit easier that than a uh, tenner's worth. Boogaboo the Flea! Boogaboo the Flea. I need to do this, because I have this for Spectrum and Commodore 64. I say I have it for the Spectrum. I have Bugaboo the Flea for the for the Spectrum. It was called Boogaboo on the 64 for some strange reason. I just realised I recognise that. That's, I've got two Quicksilver titles, and it's also um, Cuthbert in the Caves or something like that on the Amstrad. I mean, the Amstrad. Who cares, eh? For so yeah, I do need to do Boogaboo the Flea at some point. And look, it's Eli Silverman from Cheap Show. Yeah, it's it's Nightmare. I had this, I, I'm not sure if I still do. I, I do now, obviously. Maybe I have two copies now. Uh, I do remember having this at the time. And it's not very much like um, Nightmare, the... Um, series because you're not blind although you do have a bucket on your head I don't know if you can see you do kind of have a bucket on your head it was entertaining enough for, for two to three quid I wouldn't have wanted to spend a tenner on it and I didn't um, but yeah that's another one that I need to do at some point just getting out of the first room if I remember is a is a challenge enough it's a challenge for me and a challenge for the carbacle Right, well, we've got another Quintic Warrior. I remember seeing that in your 64. Um, in fact. In fact, was it this your 64? That era, anyway, 1985. Um, no, I'm not going to flick through an entire magazine just to see if there's a mention of it. But it, 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 was, it, it was one of these... Uh, it wasn't that one, it was uh, 
issue six or seven, something like that, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, Quintic Warrior, well, what, what, I know what a warrior is, I don't know what a Quintic one is. So uh, yeah, definitely going to have a look at that one at some point. Hey look, I'm building up quite a collection of Quicksilver titles all of a sudden. Instant collection! Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking. He looks kind of insectoid and he's shooting at something. I'm suspecting it's probably a centipede ripoff. Um, part man, part superman, the Quintic Warrior stands alone against the sinister crab men and mangled mutants in a dome city in the future gone mad. With this Quintic sixth sense factor. Oh, that's what Quintic means, is it? Thanks. And Blaster, he fights back the hordes in a desperate struggle. Are you warrior enough to stand by his side? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll see. What are you doing? I oh, want some plastic to crinkle behind me. Right. Let's put all the Quicksilver titles. Uh, where we go, room? Quicksilver titles there. Would you stop rustling behind me? We'll put all the... Mastertronic stuff there, and then random, random shit over here. <coughs> Bitmania. Right, that's from the same era as um, uh, Falcon Patrol. That's, a thing. that's another one I need to do as well, Falcon Patrol. Ooh, that's a heck of a... That's a heck of a lot of cardboard for your money there. Look, just not just... Oh, not just oh, the, the bare minimum. No, not just not just oh twice as much, four times as much. There's not much there. <laughs> the instructions are oh to load shift and run. So I thought that I thought that was the playing instructions. My God, from Kieran Brennan. Kieran Brennan, that name rings a bell. Kieran Brennan. Gonna have to look that up. Who's actually telling us about the game though? Bitmania. You were inside a data bus within the C60, within the 64 battle against the neuron flight. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. It looks. I'd say that's a. I'd say that's a cent, um, centipede clone, perhaps, maybe. We shall see. We shall see. We shall get to it. We shall get to that one. Bionic Granny. Oh my word! There's a Mastertronic game that I didn't have, and for good reason, because you don't really. <laughs> but um, Steve Benway's played this one quite recently, actually. I, I just watched him play it this week. So uh, and he's moved into a um, new sort of um, studio flat thing specifically for filming. So I hope that goes well for you, Steve. If um, not spoken to you before now, um, a moving house, moving things, and oh god, that sounds terrible. So um, yeah, I hope that goes well. He's actually getting a, like a proper, proper designated special area to to film in. Which um, does make a difference, because obviously for years I was just filming in the living room in the small hours of the morning or in the bedroom. And it does make such a difference having somewhere that you can go to, to escape. So uh, yeah, Bionic Granny. Terrible game, but yeah, I will get to it at some point. What's this one then? Bug Bite Star Trader. Star Trader. I'm wondering if that's sort of like knocking off um, elite type stuff. Oh, hello. That's... Um, that Star Trek symbols in space. Oh, Twin Kingdom Valley advert. Now, there's one that brings back memories. Uh, not very much. I just remember it was an arcade. It was an adventure, definitely not an arcade. It was an adventure with pictures. Um, and I had no idea how to play it or what to do. I think my cousin had it on the BBC. And it's another one I've been meaning to get around to play. So you could get £3 off Twin Kingdom Valley. For CBM64 BBC Electron versions recommended... In Nine pound fifty now, only six pound fifty, plus fifty post and packaging. So a check for seven pounds could get you Twin Kingdom Valley. Star Trader is apparently the highest plateau yet reached in Commodore sixty four software. Hmm. Right. Do we believe that? Uh, yet reached. Does it say when this was? Nineteen eighty four. Could be then. Uh, trade, barter, eat and drink with wonderful creatures from different planets everywhere, ever wary of their treacherous, volatile economies and the risk of civil disorder and death. Then return with your goods to a deadly gauntlet of space pirates intent on stealing your cargo and your own death. 
Intent upon stealing your cargo and your own death. You're going to steal your own death. Oh, okay. All enjoyed in the most advanced 3D graphics yet attained on the Commodore 64. You'll need far more than courage and quick reflexes. It takes cunning, initiative and skill to survive. Could you be a star trader? I guess we'll find out at some point. That's really very good condition. It's... it's... I can't really get the light there either. But that is so smooth. That's not worn, dog-eared or anything. That's... That's in really lovely, isn't it? I, I doubt that's been out of the case in how many years. Did I have another bug point one? No, I didn't have another bug point one, so we'll put that there. Let's just line those up there. What's this? Ghouls by Micropower. I wonder what that game could be like. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. Apparently this was owned by David Dobson. Or David Dobson wrote his name on a sticker on it anyway. Hello, David, if you're watching, this is mine now. So, Micropower, what have I, uh, Cybertron thingy. Cybertron Attack, was it? Which was fine, if a bit BBC-like. Oh, you know what? If you were thinking this was a Pac-Man clone, you'd be wrong. That looks more like Trolley Wally to me. Hmm, okay. So, uh, ghostly ghouls and bouncing spiders, moving platforms and contracting floorboards, atmospheric music and creepy sound effects, four different rooms to negotiate. A whole four! Four whole rooms! You're probably not going to go off the first one, am I? So, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, oh, Cybertron Mission. Other titles for the Commodore 64. Swoop. Snare Swoop. That was a good game on the, um, BBC. I, th I think I might have done Swoop on the BBC actually, thinking about it. I'll have to double check that. And Felix in the factory. Captain K, the software sentinel. Captain K, not K for ketamine or kremen. Right, okay. K oh, okay, it's K for kilobytes, isn't it? Yeah, obviously. Mm -hmm. Watch out for more top quality programs from Micropower. Right. Thank you, Captain K. Oh, I just noticed. Look at that. That's one of those cassettes that isn't pressure sealed. You can unscrew them. Actual screws in cassettes. Mm -mm -mm. Let's pop that there. We're onto another layer. I don't know how many layers we've got here. I think this might be it actually. Ah, this is what I was expecting. I say expecting. It was offered out of the blue. It's like, and I, and I don't know what I'm expecting here to be honest. All I know is it's something to do with Vectrax. Because it's sort of just. I was basically asked, "You've got a Vectrax, haven't you?" Yes, I do. My wonderful Vectrex that I got for £12 from a junk shop about 20-odd years ago now. And I walked out of that shop giddy with excitement, <laughs> just expecting them to go, Oh, hang on, no, that's the wrong price. Um, yeah. And so, um, yeah, I was asked, You've got a Vectrex, haven't you? I've got something you might like. And so these are all these Commodore cassettes are just bonuses on top of that. So, so I'm expecting this is going to be something... Right, it looks like there's something written at the bottom there, so in case that's an address, I will leave that covered. Oh my word. <sighs> USA Zombie Apocalypse. <sighs> this looks lovely. <laughs> it's got a bloody handprint on the back of it. And USA Zombie Apocalypse. I have no idea. I've seen some new Vectrex titles um, available, and um, I did almost get. Um, there's uh, Deep Blue, or something. there's one where you're um, diving and you've got to avoid sharks and things. I did once place an order for that and it turned out it had been sold out so I got the money refunded and then I didn't get a chance to get anything else again so um, I just kind of left that but um, so this is the first new oh my what on earth what thank you for participating in the Vectrex adventure gate D18 boarding time 9.30 gate closes 40 minutes before departure ticket for one way gate is Earth Vectrex Galaxy. I don't know what this is. In case that's upside down. 
That's nice. I guess that goes on your controller. Right. I've never seen anything like that before going on. So if it's on your controller, maybe I'll have to go and grab my controller to show you. Or maybe I'll do that one. So we've got user manual. Play, select to start playing, options, select to go to the options. Right, okay. Classic survival and sniper modes. Classic mode, visit US states to find three bombs to destroy all zombies. Survival mode, survive as long as possible the waves of zombies. Sniper mode, you only have one bullet per zombie and must headshot them. Right. Your bullets, your geographic position. Collect three bombs to win the game. Number of zombies to kill to finish the current level. Zombies to kill, your rifle sight. Bombs to collect, bullets to collect. Zombies must not exceed this limit. Right, so this here is your play area, and then this is your status, and it tells you where you are, and things to collect. I, I bet my uh, Vectrex is uh, off kilter to one side, so none of these things will line up. But uh, I, I, it's another one of those jobs. I ought to open up my Vectrex and get it recapped and recentered and all of that malarkey. But you know, it's it's working at the moment, so. Um, one of those things like, oh, do I really want to open it up and risk it? Ooh. So, uh, mm. oh, well, okay, so instead of a cartridge, which I, I could print, I've got a 3D printer just, just there, I, I could print a cartridge for it, but um, hey, I'm guessing, oh my word, I've just noticed it's got, it's got LEDs in its eyes, so it's going to light up. <laughs> That is a very cute cartridge design. What does that say on the back there? USA Zombie Apocalypse. Made in France. That is too cool. Uh, yeah, right, okay. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to be doing some Vectrex games soon, aren't I? And that's, that's going to be fun trying to um, Trying to get the Vectrex the camera focused on the Vectrex again, because that's yeah, that's that's always that's always a laugh. That is, but that is amazingly cool. I'd never even heard of this. I'd seen other Vectrex titles. It looks like there's some kind of cities blocks or something in there. I guess in a little. Is it more visible that way? Maybe it'll be more visible when it's on the uh, Vectrex and. Um, lit up. I, I've got no idea what to expect from this but it, this looks, I mean just just like this, this looks really really cool and really nicely made as well. ar-vectrex.com I will have to have a look at that and see if what other things they do because that's really, that really nice presentation. Right, hold on a second I'll go and grab my controller and I'm back and here is my control. I'm not sure if I've ever actually disconnected it. Now, obviously. So. <laughs> that fits quite nicely, actually. Because there's a lip all around the side. So, well, I mean. It doesn't say which button does. I mean, I'm guessing that's bullets, perhaps. That's fire. Does it say? It doesn't. Doesn't say which button does what in the controls in the user manual. Um, so I have no idea. I have no idea what to expect. If it's an overhead view, or I mean, that looks like they they come towards you, and you've got to move across here around sort of um, Operation Wolf, Operation Thunderbolt, that sort of time crisis. If you want to be more modern, that sort of uh, style. I was expecting something like um, Robotron or something. Right, okay. Well, that's really, really nice. How many times have I said it's really, really nice? But it's really, really nice. Really nicely made as well. Hmm. So, I have 
a new Vectrex game to play that I've never heard of and looks absolutely lovely from the presentation. Although obviously I'm aware when it comes to presentation, it, it, games aren't necessarily quite the image that they um, portray. But I'm sure this is going to be absolutely lovely. I mean, yes, just opening up the packaging has been absolutely lovely, to be honest. So let's pop that back in there, and that can go. That's, I've got a black Vectrex title on my shelf now. now. Yeah, that is really, really cool. Thank you so much for that. You know who you are. Um, and you know probably know who they are as well. Uh, but I shan't say it yet. So, um, don't know if I've got still got my original of that, but now I do have a copy. I didn't have Chilla, I didn't have Bionic Granny, both of which are terrible, but certainly going to be entertaining experiences, I'm sure. Star Trader and Bitmania, no idea. But uh, I've even forgotten what Bitmania looked like now. Oh, possibly a centipede game, perhaps. So uh, I'll have to do those at some point. No, just no, just say no. <laughs> Uh, Ghouls, I definitely haven't played. Pedro, I'm not sure. Stellar Wars, I think I have, so that can go with Fabulous Wonder. Purple Turtles, I think I've played Emulated. Boogaboo the Flu, uh, Boogaboo the Flu. Boogaboo the Flea, Boogaboo the Beegaboo the Flu, Boogaboo the Flu, Boogaboo the Flea. Need to do that at some point. And Quintic Warrior, no idea, but it's uh, one that I have vague memories of the name from way back in my childhood, so that's cool. So, to be honest, I mean, considering how many cassettes I do have, sending 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 12 cassettes, and only two of them I, I, I think I've got, that's, that's an incredible hit rate. <laughs> and I certainly didn't have anything even approaching close to that. So, um, yeah, so look out for these. Um, at some point coming up on the channel this year. Um, I've certainly got some uh, new inspiration to uh, go through. Um, I suspect I'm going to be going through quite a lot of Commodore 64 stuff. <laughs> but hey, that's how this channel started, isn't it? I was mainly Commodore 64 stuff. But I do like to keep dipping into all the other systems that I've got. Um, I do like to keep the variety up, but I think this year might be a more Commodore 64 heavy emphasis, because that's mainly what I go for isn't it I'll keep I'll keep the mix up maybe I'm wondering maybe if I do a Commodore 64 game a week and one other system a week rather than just one Commodore 64 game every I think it's every six weeks or something like that at the moment I'm doing maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll just do a Commodore 64 game a week that'll be easier to do I think so uh, yeah right well, I guess I'd better um, go and put these in the games room and um, sort stuff out. So, um, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to have a sip of tea now. Yes. Um, very, very lovely. And um, completely unnecessary. Really didn't need to send me these lovely, lovely things, but really do appreciate it. So, um, thank you very much. And um, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And um, I'll catch you on the next one, maybe. Ta-ta.